I'm not quite sure why I'm doing TBRs because I'm putting way too many books on it anyway. Let's just roll with it. <laughs> hey everyone, Fina here from Fina Reads. Today with my October TBR. And man, where does the time go? I don't even know why we already have October. But here we are. All right, I wanted to talk with you about the books that I want to read throughout the next month. And it's a lot. <laughs> Can I just take October off? Maybe, maybe then I'll get through all of those. I don't know, you know. Okay, so starting with the books that I'm in the middle of that I probably won't finish before the end of September, or if I do, it's going to be really, really, you know, close because that's already Thursday. No, that's not going to happen. Okay, so the books I'm in the middle of is Empire of Black and Gold. Let's just not talk about it. It's a disaster that I'm not already further along with that. As you can see, I it's not much. It's only 40 pages. <laughs> 40 pages into Empire Black and Gold. So I started that one and I want to continue that. And now with October, three books behind. That was August. Dragonfly Falling was September. And October is, I don't even know. Blood of the Mantis. Blood of the Mantis would be in October. So I'm already three books behind. Believe me, I didn't put Dragonfly Falling on my October TBR knowing I will not get to it anyway. So let's at least get this through this Empire of Black and Gold. The other one, and I'm only holding up the dust jacket because I always take off the dust jacket of uh, hardcover books because I ripped one once and it was very sad. So I'm not doing this again. And that's Empire of the Vampire by Jake Kristoff. I got the Barnes & Noble's exclusive edition just in case someone cares. It's even signed, I think. And... I was, when I read about this book, I was actually not planning on picking it up. I thought it's going to be like a twilight with a bit more blood. But for whatever reason, I picked it up and I started reading it. Also, I'm not very far in just, I think, 60 pages, not even probably. No, 34 pages. So same thing. See, I'm still in the early pages, but the writing still is kind of interesting so far. So yeah. <laughs> I'll just see. I don't know much about it. I know it's about vampires, as the name says, but that's pretty much it. I haven't read anything else from Jake Kristoff. I know he did the Nevernight whatever trilogy, but I haven't read that, so I'm excited to see what Empire of the Vampire is about. And I thought it kind of fits into October, plus, I don't know, I just felt for whatever reason, I felt like something with vampires, which is why I'm starting to read it. Next up, Buddy Reads in October. Okay, they are not too many. One, only one that I signed up for, but the other one sounded interesting. And I'm thinking about just, it's not a buddy read technically, but I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so buddy read. The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman is read by Michael Nipp's patrons. And I have this random copy here sitting around for some time now. And I've never read anything by Neil Gaiman. And I think I just grabbed this because at my used bookstore at one point, because it was like, I've never read something by Neil Gaiman. I should. So I I don't even know what this is about. I have no idea. Michael Lips patron. They, I mean, so far, I would have to look, but I think it was a 50-50 of me liking it versus not. <laughs> hmm. Let's see where this falls under. The other one is technically not a buddy read, but it's the monthly read over at Books with Emily Fox, and that's Isaac Asimov's Foundation. And I needed a reason to pick this up. It's a thin read. It's not, it's like 230-ish pages. Yep, 230 pages. And I wanted to read this in forever. My dad actually told me about Isaac Asimov years and years ago. He read it when he was young. And, um, oh, it was, I think, when iRobot came out, the movie with Will Smith. I think that's when, when I talked with him about it. And since then, I wanted to read Isaac Asimov. But... Since I haven't read or wasn't reading sci-fi till just a couple months ago, I was always scared picking it up and now I'm having it here and now I needed a reason to pick it up. So I hope I get motivated and join Emily Fox's monthly read. Okay, books that I haven't started yet that are not buddy reads that I need to read. God of Rome, I had that in I think every TBR that I've been talking about. So still Gods of Rome, still a book I need to read again on my TBR. Let's move on. Let's just not, you know. Check mark. Yes, I still need to read it. <laughs> eventually, eventually, my nonfiction book of the month that I would like to read, also a Nat Galley pick actually, is the biography of Angela, uh, Angela Merkel. I 
can't say that in English. Angela sounds doesn't work for me, sorry. So Angela Merkel's biography. This comes out later in October, and I would love to read that before then. And in preparation of that, I got... Uh, it's a German book. It basically... I don't know how it translates well. My brain is not working currently. But it's a book that covers... It's this one. And it says, Never again, no clue. Loosely translated. But it's a book by two German news anchors. They are news anchors for a kids' news show. And they are also journalists or something. I don't know. I, I don't know them. I just found it by accident. And this book is a nonfiction that explains how the German government's work, government works, how um, elections work, how the EU works. A little bit about some of the European wars that happened not too long ago um, and some other stuff. So just, you know, basic nonfiction. And the premise of this book is, you know, there are all of these topics that are always talked about in the news that no one can actually really explain. So let's do that for you. And while I think the premise is great, that very subjective. I had no idea that news journalists, especially from a from a um, TV channel that is supposed to be very neutral. There are so many subjective comments in here. Unbelievable. But, you know, I'm using chopsticks as bookmarks. So there's that. All right. And then because October and you remember I said in my popular opinions book tech, I would like to read more horror. I got some recommendations in the comments and then I talked, I think it was at the Discord of the bookish drummer Jake a little bit and just asked, and they provided a bunch of recommendations for horror books. And I read one already. I will talk about that at a later point. But I got two other ones. And one of them, at least, I would like to read. I'm not quite sure if I can get to both. Probably not. But at least one of them. One is My Heart is a Chainsaw that Evie also really, really loved and was talking about on her channel a lot. So My Heart is a Chainsaw. And then... The other one is Getaway by Zoe Stage. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. And I've read Wonderland by her and thought it was really, really good. I really liked her writing style. So I want to try the other one from her. And if I like this one, that baby teeth one sounds really creepy. So I definitely want to try that out too. So one of those is going to be my horror book of the month of October. And then I have kind of a rest. The rest of them is kind of a loose list of random books that I really like to get to. I just don't know when. I need more time, people. Um, starting with Children of Dune. Just, you know, Children of Dune. But that's the German copy. I finally got it. So I hope I'm getting to read this one. I kind of like the cover of this and the general design of these. But that's book three. So I hope I'm getting to this. And I hope I will now understand all the, you know, comments in between the lines a bit better. Another one is The Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heep. And just because there's a bookmark in there doesn't mean I've started reading it already. I just put it in there in preparation <laughs> of me reading it. Do you do that too? Already putting bookmarks into the book that you really, really want to read. So you know kind of, oh, there's a bookmark. I really, really need to read it. Um, but this one, and that's by H.G. Perry. And I just recently read her Shadows Histories duology and I did a review for that and I loved it. She is definitely a great author and it's probably going to be an auto, auto by author and she had one um, backlist book. So I really would love to get to that. If that is similar great writing as the other two books, I'm definitely here for it. The next one I never thought I would pick up and that's TJ Klune Under the Whispering Door. Everything I've heard about TJ Klune and the type of books he's writing, I was like, this is not for me. I'm not going to like it. <laughs> and here's the book. So I don't know. I, I mean, I love the covers. Seriously, they are so whimsical and adorable. And I just know that this is about death. Yeah. So I don't know. I kind of want to try it. I have a feeling I'm not going to be a huge fan because at least the house in the Cerulean Sea, his other book, it's they say it's very wholesome and, you know, you want to give everybody a hug and stuff like that. And that's not usually stories I read. So I'm I'm not I'm going into this with very low expectations. And it's really more the topic itself dealing with grief 
that made me pick this up. Also book shopping. And the last one that I would love to pick up is The Sisters Grimm. Again, something I don't know much about. I just know it's about four sisters that each can control one of the elements, fire, water, you know, those. And somehow with just one of them can survive or only three can survive or something like that. And I'm not sure if this is considered YA or adult fantasy, but again, cover, gorgeous. Grim, well, I like the Brothers Grimm, so I hope <laughs> there's a little bit of that in there. I actually really don't know. But yeah, I think I think that's enough. Send help, please. Thank you so much for joining my October TBR. What are you reading in October? Are you someone who reads based on seasons? Are you reading fall type of books or spooky books or, you know, horror or vampire stuff or Halloween witchy stuff? Are you someone who reads based on season? I usually am not, but for whatever reason, I'm in the mood of all of this right now. <laughs> Although I really like Halloween, so maybe that's why. But usually I'm not, uh, ooh, this is your typical beach read or this is your cozy Christmas read. Usually I'm not like that. But I, are you someone who does this? I would be really interested. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye.